Hey, what's up everyone? Julian here and welcome to another episode of Learning Flask. This is episode 13 and we're going to be uploading files. Now, uploading files, of course, is a important part of any web application or any website. You know, images, video, CSVs, text files, PDFs, all these different files at some point you're probably going to be working with and you're going to need to get them from the client up to the server. So let's jump straight in and see how we do it. Now, text-based version of this tutorial, I'll chuck a link in the description. You can see it's quite a long one. Uh, we've got quite a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. We've got the development server up and running. We've got an editor and we've got our terminal. So let's go ahead and flask run. You can see we are here in the development environment. So let's get to it. First things first. Uh, if you're not follow, if you've not been following along with the series, it's fine. Just go ahead and create a new route and follow along with what we do. So first things first, we need to create a new route because we're going to create a form to allow our user to upload files. So. In this example, we're going to be working with images, but the same principles apply to any file type. So def upload image, and we're just going to return a new template. Upload image.html, and we know we're going to be posting data to the server, so let's go ahead and add the methods here in the root get and post. Okay, so we've got our new route. Let's go ahead and create our new file. So here in public, new file, upload image.html. And to make this quick, I'm just gonna copy what we've got here in this index file, and I'm gonna paste that in here. And feel free to go ahead and pause the video and copy what we've got. But essentially, we're just extending our base template, which is in public template. And we've got a block for the title and a block for the main. So let's go ahead and just change this. Upload, let's change that to upload image. And we've got an H1 here, upload image. Now we are using Bootstrap, so feel free to go ahead to the Bootstrap website and copy the starter template and just create yourself a base template, and this is a child template. Or just don't bother at all and just use the browser defaults, it's absolutely fine. So, we need to create a form, so let's go ahead and do that now. Form tag, the action is the URL that we want to post the form data to, so ours is upload image, the method we're going to use is post. Now this is an important part to pay attention to. The enc type. And in our case, we're going to be using this one, multi-part slash form data. And that allows us to send form data and files up to the server. So let's go ahead, let's make, let me sort this spacing out. Okay, I'm just going to make this bigger for now so you guys can see what's going on. So we need to create a, uh, a browser, a file browser to allow um, our users to browse for files and upload them. So we will do the following and I'm just going to copy and paste this because I want to power through this because we have got a lot of ground to cover. So go ahead, pause the video and copy what we've got here. But essentially we've just got a div here with the class of form group, which wraps this uh, input field. We've got a label and we've got a, another internal div here. And these are just the bootstrap classes that we're using. But the important part here is the input and the type is set to file and the class is just a, another bootstrap class just for a bit of styling. Now you must make sure you've got a name attribute and also give it a uh, just give it the name of image or whatever kind of file you're uploading. If it's PDF, changes to PDF. Um, and we've got an ID on here because we're going to be doing something a little bit of JavaScript later on, but it will all make sense and it's very very simple. So let's go ahead and save that. And jump back in to our browser and head to upload image. And there we go. We need to create a button. Forgot about that. So button class is btn btn dash uh, primary and also we need to add the type is submit because that's going to let us submit our form go ahead refresh need to put some text on the button 
upload image, refresh. Now we can post this form and you can see here in the terminal, we're getting a nice little post readout there. So the form is posting, but how do we? Well, in fact, let me show you the image browser. So there we go, you just click that and it opens a sort of native file browser. Here on Windows or on a Mac, if you use a Mac or on a Linux machine, it will do the exact same thing. So accessing files, how do we do it? Well, actually one thing I should have pointed out is we've got render template imported from Flask up here. So you wanna go ahead and import the following, import request and import redirect. And that's all we're gonna need for uh, this example. So just go ahead and make sure you've got these three imported from Flask. So go ahead and do that. So accessing the image. So just like with um, request.args that we use to get the query string arguments coming in, just like request.getjson uh, and just like request.form, we use request.files. So first things first, I wanna do if request.method is equal to post. And then the next thing I wanna do is if request.files so request.files, again, is just like request.form or request.args. It kind of creates a unique storage object which contains the files coming in from the form. So if there are request.files, then we want to do something. So let's go ahead and just store our file in a variable called image. And then we use request.files. And then just like a dictionary, we can pluck our uh, values by key, so image. And because we set the uh, name attribute to image on our input, we access it with the same name. So, you know, if you, uh, if you save this as, you know, profile image or something, then you access it here, change uh, image to profile image. So now let's just go ahead and print image and I'm going to return a redirect to the request.url. So let's go ahead and upload a file. This one will do. Now pay attention to the terminal. And there we go, we get this file storage object with the file name and the uh, a bit of detail about the file type, so image slash PNG. So file storage is like a, um, a special storage object from uh, Flask or Flask's kind of underlying uh, HTTP powered um, library called Verxoic. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this. You guys are here to uh, learn how to save files. So we need to import OS. So come up here and import OS. Go ahead and save that come back down to our root. So what we are gonna do, now you could just save this as it is, but I wanna give us a little bit of control over our files. So what I'm gonna do is add something to our app config, and I'm gonna call this image uploads. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna specify a path to where we wanna save our image uploads. Now you don't have to do this, you could sort of manually code in a path of where you want to save the image to, but it's just a little bit easier doing it like this. So if we have a look at our directory structure, you can see here I've got static image and then also this new directory here called uploads. And I've, I've got a few files in here at the moment. Just go ahead and delete those. So we've got, yeah, static image uploads. And what you want to do is provide a complete path to the directory of where you wanna save these files to. So in my case, if I go ahead and quit our Flask app and then CD into app, static, IMG and uploads, and then PWD, which is gonna print the working directory, you can see here I get this long path and that's the absolute path to where I want to save my images. I need to make that a string. So go ahead and create the directories of where you wanna store your images, and then go ahead and copy the complete path and 
paste that in and that's going to uh, get stored as your image uploads variable in the app config. Now, if you haven't, if you don't know about uh, app configuration, then I think the video I made last covers app config. Now, normally I would put this in a configuration file, but just for this example, I'm going to throw it up here. So, um, yeah, like I said, if you, uh, it's best practice to go and put this in your config file, you know, in like a development config, but for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So we've specified where we want our images to be uploaded to. So how do we actually save it? Well, what we can do is um, image.save and the dot save is just a method on the uh, file storage object that we saw in the terminal earlier. And then we just give it a path to where we want to save it to. But what we're going to do is do the following os dot path dot goodness me join and then parentheses and now i'm going to give it the directory in our image uploads so we'll go ahead and chuck that in there and then we need to give it the file name so image dot sorry i'm full of typos this morning image dot file name so Again, dot file name is an attribute of this um, file storage object where we've, uh, which is holding onto our image. So once we've got that, we're pretty much good to go. And let's go ahead and just print something out to let us know that the image has been saved. Image saved. Let's clear a bit of space here. Come back to our browser. Go ahead and upload this one. It's called YT Thumb. Upload. Oh, of course the app needs to be running. What have I done here? Could not import run. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory, aren't I? That was silly. There we go. Right, we're back on track. So let's go ahead, select our file, upload the image, and there we go, image has been saved. And if we come back and look in our structure here, uploads, there we go, we've got the YT thumb PNG saved. So that was relatively painless, um, but we don't really have much control over what kind of images are being uploaded, if they're of the correct kind of file type, if they're exceeding a certain size, if the file even has a name. So we want to probably give ourselves a bit of validation over this. So what do we want? I want to ensure that the file has a name. I want to make sure that it's a file type that we specify. Uh, I want to make sure that the file name is secure and I want to make sure that the size of the file is, you know, within a reasonable limit. So how do we do that? Well, the easiest and quickest one of them all is going to be um, just checking the, uh, the image itself actually has a name. So we'll do the following. If uh, image dot file name is equal to nothing and then we're going to just print image must have a file name and then we will return a redirect for the request.url so this is going to stop any files coming up to us that don't have a, uh, a file name so that's the first thing. The next one is the file type. So, you know, with images, we've got PNGs, we've got JPEGs, we've got uh, GIFs or GIFs. So how do we go ahead and control that? Well, again, we're going to add something to our app config. So app config, I'm going to call this allowed image extensions and we're going to give it a list and in this case we're going to do them all uppercase 
uh, PNG, let's do JPG, JPEG, and GIF. So we've got these four um, file types for the images that we want to allow. So we need to create a function that's going to take this image object, it's going to split apart the file name and the extension, it will then check to see if the extension is in our, um, our list here, and then it's just going to return a true or false whether the image is allowed or not. So let's create this function. Um, I'll call it allowed image, and that's going to take a file name. And then what would we want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is make sure that there is actually a dot in the file name. So if not dot in file name, then we'll just go ahead and return false for now. Else, what are we going to do? Well, I want to split the uh, extension from the file name and we'll just do that and uh, store it as a variable called ext and that will be file name dot uh, r split because we want to split it from the right and we want to split it on the dot and we're going to take the uh, first element there from the right which will be the extension. So now let's check if our extension is actually allowed uh, by comparing it to what's in our, uh, our list here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll use the dot upper method to uh, make sure that this extension is uppercase in app.config. And then I'm just gonna copy the name here so if the uppercase version of the extension is in our app config allowed image extensions, we will return true. Else, let's return false. Okay. So we've got this function which is going to check to see if the extension is allowed. So let's go ahead and add that into our root here. So if allowed image and then we'll give it the image dot file name and let's go ahead and if it is then we're going to do something if it's not then we will uh, return false so in fact it's probably even more efficient to um, just do the following uh, we will print uh, that image extension is not allowed and then we'll return uh, redirect for the request URL like so. Okay, so we're making sure we got a file name. We're making sure we've got a uh, allowed image with the correct extension. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that the file name itself isn't dangerous. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail about why, but you know, let's say somehow man someone managed to sneak some dodgy file name into our system and then somehow our server goes and you know runs that file or does some kind of execution, you know, it could be uh, it could be something pretty bad. So how do we do that? Well, thankfully, uh, Verxoic, which is uh, kind of part of what makes up Flask, provides us with really nice function to do this. So I'm gonna head up to the top here and do the following from uh, verxoic.utils uh, import secure file name. So go ahead and do that. And secure file name basically just takes a file name and returns a file name, a secure version of it. So let's go ahead and put this into practice. Um, what we're going to do is I might throw an else just under here. So if it's not allowed, then we'll go ahead and create a new file name using the secure file name and we'll give it the image dot file name. 
So this is going to give us a nicely sanitized file name for the image. And then what we're going to do is just finish this off with basically what we've got here. So I'm going to tab that over. And then instead of image dot file name, we're just going to remove that image and dot. And we've just got our file name there. So quickly recap what we've done. We've created this uh, app config dictionary object here with allowed image extensions. We've given it a list of the extensions that we want to allow. We then create this function, which is going to uh, make sure there's a dot in the file name. It's going to split the file name from the extension and uh, convert that file name to uppercase and compare that to what we've got in our um, allowable extensions. And it will return true if that's fine. It will return false if it's not. So then we use that function here to uh, basically say true or false. And if it's false, it's going to print this message that image extension is not allowed. And then we are creating a new secure file name using the uh, secure file name function, passing it the image file name and then saving that file with the secure file name. So let's go ahead and do so. And what I'll do, I think there was a different image in that directory. So yeah, we got this one post image, go ahead and upload. And there we go, image saved. And now if I browse into here and select this file, which I believe is a SVG file. Yeah, that's good. So if we go ahead and open that and there we go, we get that image extension is not allowed. So that's that seems to be working pretty well. Here we got a markdown file, go ahead and do that. And there we go, that image extension is not allowed. So this is kind of secure, um, but what about file size? Now I've been kind of reading through the documentation on Flask and uh, Verkzeug and from what I can see, I can't find a way to just give me the actual size of the image. So it's not like a uh, an attribute or some kind of method that you can call on the image object that will just give you the size of the image. So it'd be nice if, if we could do that. So as a bit of a workaround, what I decided to do was use JavaScript to actually get the size of the image and store that as a cookie in the in the browser. And then when this form gets posted up, you know, it's going to send that cookie and then we can read the cookie in, we can change it into an integer and then decide, you know, do we want to save this image or not? Is it too big? So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do down here in our um, upload image file is create a block script. And this, if you haven't got a, uh, a block script tag in your base template, then I'll just show you an example. So if we look at our public template here, this is our base template, and I've got this block script section just before the closing body tag. So any um, any JavaScript we, we write inside these block script tags, it's going to get filled in to the block script tags in our base template. So uh, end block. Now we need some script tags. So go ahead and do so. Now we need to, I want to create a function. So we'll just call it uh, file size. And that's going to take the actual uh, element itself. And then what we'll do for now is just console.log elem so you can see what's going on. And now I want to create a some kind of listener on the input. So I'll just add it on this side so you can see it a bit better. Um, where are we? Uh, so it's an on input handler. So on input, we're going to trigger the file size function and I'm going to pass it this. And when you pass a uh, pass this to a some kind of handler that's in the HTML, it's going to pass in this whole element here. So we go ahead and save that. Let's open the developer tools. Check our console. Just going to refresh that. Browse. Thumb. There we go. We can see we've got the actual element in there. But we want the file size. So what do we do? So we can do lm um, dot files 
and we want the first file, so we use a, uh, a zero there, and then just size like so. And if we come back, refresh that, browse, open, and there we can see we get a size of the file here in bytes. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's uh, 430,752 bytes. So we can access the file size relatively easy. So why don't we go ahead and set that as a cookie. And the way we do that is with typos for days, top document dot cookie equals, and then you just give it a string with um, a key and a value, but I'm gonna need to use a bit of interpolation here. So we'll just save this as file size and then we'll use the uh, dollar curly braces string interpolation syntax for JavaScript here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy that in. Paste. Let's go ahead and delete that console log. Put a code on there for good measure. So now if we go ahead and refresh, browse, YT thumb, open. So that should now have saved as a cookie. And we can see that if we come to application. Uh, I don't know if, anyway, look, I hope this doesn't, uh, it's not dangerous for me to show you any of these, but it should be fine. But you can see here we get file size with the actual size of the file there in bytes. Yeah, okay. Well, I hope I haven't exposed myself to uh, anything dangerous there, but I think it should be fine. Right, um, so we've got the cookie, we've set the cookie, and that's going to post up to the server every time we send a post request using the form. So, how do we access it? So, if request.files, let's do it inside here. So, we can do print request.cookies. And if we uh, go ahead and I'll just show you an example now we just go ahead and do that upload the image and you can see here we get some cookie data being sent in so we got the session which is from our flask app and then we've got this uh, file size cookie here so we got the cookie coming in why don't we go ahead and build a function that's going to take that and then do something with it so let's go ahead down here and create a function allowed image file size and that's going to take a file size object like so. So if the int version of the file size is less than something. So first actually we need to specify our maximum file size. So Let's just go ahead and do that here. And again, we'll use our um, app config. So app.config max image file size equals. And for now, let's just keep something uh, relatively small. So 0.5 times 1024 times 1024, which I think is around... Uh, 500,000 bytes. So that will do for now. Um, come back and uncomment this. I don't know why I commented that. Just bad habit, I guess. Um, okay, I want to finish off this function. So if the integer of file size is less than or equal to app config, and then we'll just go ahead and copy max image file size. So if it's less than that, return true. Else we will return false. So let's go ahead and start using this function. Uh, let's put it below. In fact, let's put it here. So before we even give our root a chance to actually save this image variable let's go ahead and do the uh, do the cookie thing so if in fact let's uh, if request dot cookies do we want to do that 
I mean, if the client clears a cookie, but then it's always going to be... Mm, no, we'll just leave that for now. So if, uh, what do we call the function? Allowed. Allowed image file size. And to that, we want to pass that cookie. So request.cookies. We'll use dot get file size. Then we want to go ahead. Well, in fact, let's again just do if not. Um, then we will return uh, a redirect for the request.url. Request.url, and we'll print out a message just before that. Say print file exceeded maximum size. Okay, cool. So I think we are going to be up and running. And I think that should be enough to uh, to work with. So again, we're just pulling in that cookie here using the request.cookies.get and grabbing the uh, key file size. And then we're going to go ahead and validate if the file size is good or not. So let's go ahead and test this out. Did I save that? No. Go ahead and save. So this means we need a big enough image. So I think this was below. Yeah. That's 430 bytes. Uh, how big's this one? That is 122 bytes. I think I've probably got a bigger image maybe in here. What's this one? Just some random image that we've got. Not rename properties. That's 580 bytes, okay. Let's go ahead and grab that one. Upload image, there we go. And we get our nice error here. File exceed maximum. <laughs> maximum, come on, sort your life out. Right, so there we go. We can see that is working. And if we upload that again, file exceeded maximum file size. And we didn't get our image saved uh, print, so we come to upload here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We've only uploaded two images and the one we were trying to upload was called test image. So if we try it one more time, exceeded. And let's upload something small. I mean, let's have a look at this one. Properties, that's, uh, that's small. So try that one, upload image, and there we go, image saved. We come back here and there we go. We can see it was the uh, Python Ice Fabicon. So that pretty much wraps things up for this one. I know it's probably been a bit of a long one, but I thought there was quite a lot of ground to cover. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, feel free to subscribe. We've plenty more videos on Flask and Python coming soon. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. And as always, thank you for watching and see you on the next one.